45 Crazy Moments with Strangers According to Reddit Number 45 I'd lock myself out of my flat once when I was taking out the rubbish. It would have been close to midnight. Female, early 20s, and just out of the hospital. I had no way to get in and no money. No phone or any nearby friends. I don't remember this boy arriving or explaining myself to him, but he sat with me until the morning and the whole night long beneath my block. He limited, he had limited English, so we barely spoke, and he shared a tin of pineapple with me that he had in his bag. He was calm, empty of ill intent, quiet, but watchful, friendly, a big open smile. When the sun came up, he walked in, I'll never forget him or how kind he was to do that. Some people are so in tune with the world, they protect it. I hope he was okay, too. Well, what a wonderful gesture. Traveling Trico says, hey, and so does Linda. Hope you guys are having an interesting day. Number 44. In 2014, it snowed two inches. Inches. Got ahead of myself there, forgive me. It snowed two inches. He did it again. It snowed two inches in Central North Carolina during business hours. To this, mm, thank you, Jinx. To this day, we call the commute home snowpocalypse. North Carolina and its drivers are just unprepared to deal with this sort of shit. My normal 10-minute commute turned into a two-hour ordeal of gridlock across surface streets. I waited patiently for the lights to turn at the corner of Markham and Broad. I was second in line to go, and behind me, the car stretched as far as the eye could see, but finally I was just blocks away from home, almost there. The light turns green, and the car in front of me started to move, but began fishtailing in the newly fallen snow. The guy behind me got out of his car, knocked on my window, and says, is she stuck? He said. I nodded. In an unspoken moment of agreement, I got out too, and together we walked over to her vehicle, still fishtailing, and began pushing from behind. We too slipped and slid in the snow, but the extra traction was enough that the car was able to make a right turn. I and my newfound friend walked back to our cars and just as started to move forward. That's what it says. Um... The intersection gridlocked again, and it took me another half hour to drive the several blocks home. But there was some sense of camaraderie in the common experience of being stuck in traffic due to a light snowfall. But that's North Carolina for you. What a charming little cutesy story, making me wonder once again if I've started too uh, low on this list. Not that there's anything wrong with it. And, you know, I delight in reading these for you, so here's hoping it gets interesting. Hello, banal vulgarian and lady Simka. Wow. Number 43. I've been waiting for a question like this. This was about two years ago when I was in university. I was having some gas pain, so I went to use the bathroom. I was the only one in there, but someone came in shortly after, so I decided to wait until she was done. She apparently was in the same situation as me, so we were both just sitting in silence waiting for the other to leave occasionally letting out tiny toots. Finally, she says, Can we both just fart? I laugh and say, Yes, please. And for about a minute after, both of us are simultaneously laughing and farting, laughing because we're farting, and farting because we're laughing. We finished at about the same time and said, Hello, as we washed our hands. I never saw her again. I still giggle every time I think of it. What is this, a TIFU? Number 42. I crashed a wedding when I was 18 because it was on my bucket list and ended up dancing with a woman who was maybe 24 or 25. Her name was Natalie. We danced for a couple of songs and then the DJ put on a slow song. And I was thinking in my head that that's my cue to leave. But I have this habit of when I think I shouldn't do something because of a negative thought sorry that 
you know what? I thought that the 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 I thought the sentence would continue. But what what the way it should have been delivered was I have but I have this habit of when I think I should shouldn't do something because of a negative thought. It's it's a poorly structured sentence. I can be forgiven for it. I just say fuck it and do it. So I grabbed her hand and we slow danced. I didn't know anything about this woman beyond her name, and here I was, slow dancing. After that, I bounced because people were starting to look at me funny, suspiciously. So I left without saying goodbye. Honestly, I look back and think and wonder how Natalie is doing. This was in October of 2013, and honestly, that was the first time I said fuck it and did what my heart wanted instead of my head. Life has been better ever since. What a ridiculous list. <laughs> and we're only just beginning. So let's make some progress up the list of 41 remaining crazy moments with strangers. My son is in a pretty serious accident. I was maybe, I was a wreck in the ICU waiting for the news. A little girl, maybe nine or 10 years old, was with her family saying goodbye to her great grandmother. She waltzed right up to me and said, Sir, why are you crying? I explained, My son was very sick. She handed me a miniature puppy doll and told me it was lucky, and my son would get better. She was right. He did, and I still keep the little puppy on my dresser and think of that sweet child. What a wonderful gesture. Hmm. It's funny remembering that there's a little bit of good in the world, I guess. Sometimes the smallest kind gesture goes a long way. I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm so tired of these bad Overwatch players. <laughs> okay, so we go to number 40. I met a young woman who was crying her eyes out in the back of the train station CVS while I was there picking up stamps before heading onto the train to catch my flight home, the sentence continues. No, it's it's parentheses. Because I guess we need the information that he had to get some bills in the post office before I'd left or I'd forgot about them. What? She had a very young, around two-year-old child with her, and the kid was getting progressively more panicky that his mom was losing it in public. She was undressing for the snowstorm outside. Though the kid was bundled up properly in oversized clothes that looked like they might have been hers. They both only spoke Spanish. Forgive me. But I was able to go up and ask them what was going on. The young mom wailed, but the little boy was very interested in my big rolly suitcase. I offered, in Spanish, to watch him for a few minutes while she got things sorted out and cleaned herself up in the bathroom then took him on a walk through the food aisle and let him pick out some snacks, which I bought for him. About 50 minutes later, she comes out of the bathroom looking like a different person. She cried again when I offered her the bag of groceries and a 20, which was all the cash I had on me, and tried not to accept it until I insisted. She thanked me profusely, the little kid hugged me, and they left into the Boston winter. I can't imagine how bad things must have been to trust a stranger with her child. But it was one of those moments when I realized I had the opportunity to make an actual difference in the way that this kid lived for the la least for at least the next week or so. He was well-mannered, and as someone who's volunteered in at-risk grade school classrooms, he didn't give off the impression that trusted adults had ever harmed him. He was just hungry and scared about whatever was going on with his mom. I have no idea where they are now, and I hope they are okay. Apparently in an edit, he seems inclined to add a quote from something called The Year in Ugliness, what may be a book by Arabelle Sacardi. It says, it is easy to walk away quickly or walk quickly past something that makes you uncomfortable. It is easy to freeze and stay frozen until your chance is gone. It is easy to save yourself first. It is easy to turn and keep walking. It's instinctual. That does not mean it is forgivable. 
Fixing everything in the world is impossible, but it is also impossible to know how much a little thing can count for. Not knowing and not daring to find out, that is ugliness too. It's funny, you know, I can't read things like this and not be a cynic. But the bottom line is, half of the people that, you know, people know their names because they're like the wealthiest motherfuckers in the world. Not rich, nigga. Wealthy. 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 That's something that you can't throw away. That's something that, like, you, you can't squander running down to buy some lottery tickets or buying a house or some cars or some shit. I'm talking wealth, right? They got to where they are by being exactly the type of person that does what is easy. They don't try to save other people first because that shit ain't easy. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't for a second hesitate to do what will benefit themselves first and perhaps only. Thank you, Jinx, for that, uh, for that, um, cheer. And it's nice to see bass clarinet, emperor, and, uh, why we have birthday cupcakes for Rhea? Thank you for hosting, Rhea. I was wondering if it was her birthday or something. Forgive me? Number 39. I wrestled in high school, and after a match, tradition dictates that you walk over and shake the hand of your opponent's coach. Then cross the mat diagonally and shake your own coach's hand, crossing paths with your former opponent as you do so. Once after a match, the kid I'd never met before, I said, round the world. As we approached each other, and we high-fived as we crossed paths, and then did the round the world high-five thing, and high five down low behind our backs. It was one of my proudest moments. <laughs> okay, man. Okay. Jinx says this has become a thing for me now. Wait, what's become a thing? The cupcakes for Rhea? I like that she writes, it's like the first time every time. That sounds dirty. I'm trying to get monetized just once in my life, guys. Uh, I just want to know what it feels like. Uh, PewDiePie, make my life. <laughs> Number 38, my touch football team was sponsored by a local bar that does karaoke on the same day of the week that our games are. We went for a beer after our game, and I don't sing well, but I enjoy singing and I'm not shy. I sing the occasional song, but I would say one every four times we go. Wasn't planning on singing this time, but a girl went up on stage and asked if anyone would sing that song from Greece. You're the one that I want. I thought, why the hell not? I went up, we fucking nailed it. People were dancing and cheering. We finished the song, we both sort of said, good job, shit. She went back to her table with her friends, and I went back to my football team. She and her friends left shortly afterward. That was over 20 years ago. I still think about that night from time to time. Interesting. I hope he doesn't feel like it's a missed up, but you're not her. I always like to think about those uh, assholes who gave a shit about the, the people being photographed without their knowledge on a plane. And I wonder when I read things like this, if people are in the comment section like, We've got to find that woman from 20 years ago. She's got a life. Calm down. No, chew. No. We need to find her. This is the, the romance. The romance. Listen, you didn't hear no nasal spray, okay? I promise you. Number 37. When I was 14, I was trapped in the rubble of an earthquake. I spent six hours crawling towards a man whose face I never had the opportunity to see. He was a citizen who didn't leave his name with anyone and never came forward after the fact. It has always bothered me that I will likely never find out who he was or tell him how much comfort his voice gave me during those horrible hours. When I saw pictures of the space I ended up in much later, I couldn't and can't understand how he was able to stand where he stood for six hours without injuring himself or suffering some sort of emotional trauma himself. He's my hero. And they say that a hero. Damn, Vanessa. Damn, girl. And she didn't even say anything, man. That's some cold shit, man. That is some cold shit. You know what I mean? 
think I just opened up Skype accidentally. God damn it. Alright, let me just quit. Okay, brilliant. There you go. I want the stream to, you know, recognize greatness. Recognize Vanessa. She's incredible. Wow. Wow. How can she do... Whoa, no, what the fuck? Hey, wait a minute. I want to see if I can do something. How come I can't use the other ones? Do they need to be reviewed? Yeah. That's gay. Can't believe I gotta wait to use my own damn emotes. Do you know who I am, Twitch channel? Thank you, Vanessa, for being wonderful. As usual. Every single day. You could say Vanessa's my hero. Um, I was going to make an anime reference because of the word hero, but I'm not going to do it. Number 36. As a teenager, I caught a bus into town. An old chap took the one free seat next to me, and somehow we started chatting. He started telling me about how he took part in a battle during World War II where he was one of a, only a handful of survivors. It was fascinating listening to him, especially being an army brat myself. I wish I could have spent longer on the bus with him and remembered more of the conversation, but it's lived with me now for 35 years. Damn. I totally was not dealing with the aftermath of a nasal spray that I did not use earlier. So number 35, I was at this event in a nearby provincial park. Is that how that's pronounced, man? Are you going to sneeze? <sighs> Excuse me. Okay. Fuck me. Thank you. Um, provincial. 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 I was at this event in a nearby provincial park that offered a shuttle service in and out of the park. They got more interest and bargained for, I, wait. They got more interest than bargained for, I guess, and people ended up having to wait about two hours for a ride out of the park. This made some people very angry at these poor rangers who were obviously just kids and summer jobs. This big dude was just screaming at this young looking girl, just going at her about doing something productive. The poor girl was in tears and just apologizing over and over and trying to get her co-workers, but he wasn't letting her pass. This pissed me the fuck off, so I yelled, what the fuck is she supposed to do? And this older lady a few people down joined in with me to pretty much shame the dude back to his family. Of course, when the buses finally came, he sat his fat ass down on one of the priority seats, despite there being a woman with a walker almost falling down right beside him. Old lady from before swoops in, manages to kick him off, and sat the woman down. What a badass lady. Badass lady. I miss you. Thank you for the bless me, Linda. You bless me, I bless you. We bless each other, Scooby-Doo. Jinkies. Number 34. I'll share the Cliff Notes version since it sounds so unreal. Tournament. Years ago, I walked to a bridge... Um, with intention of killing myself. Even though it writes, <laughs> it reads, years ago I walked to a bridge with the intention okay killing myself by jumping off. I met a guy there who wouldn't stop hovering around me. Eventually he approaches me and tells me, I have bad spirits around me. <laughs> and that I should keep my head up and not give in to them. Oh, he's saying that. He said, no, wait, you've, you've totally botched this, my dude. Have you ever written anything before? He, he's suicidal. Give him a 
No, but I mean, come on. Th this is the reason he's suicidal. If he can't fucking form this clear, what what he mean? If he's gonna write the quotations, what he means is that the guy said you have bad spirits around you in reference to himself. But but the guy came up. He shouldn't have put the quotations at all. That's what he shouldn't have done. Okay. So a guy approaches me and says I have bad spirits around me and that I should keep my head up and not give in to them. He then <laughs> asks you. <laughs> Ask is <laughs> yes. Okay, listen. Um, English is not this guy's first language. That does not make him the target of ridicule. He has uh, made the um, effort to learn something um, more than what he should be expected to. And uh, how many of us can say the same? You know. So he then asks, is stop it. So he then asks us if he can. He asks if he can smudge me. <laughs> My God, I'm sorry. If only there were a way to go back in time. I wish someone would smudge me right now. He then asks if he can smudge me. I didn't know what that was, but agreed anyway. He pulls out a sage. He pulls out sage, a lighter, and a shell from his backpack. A shell? Wait, like, from his backpack and proceeds to bless me right there. Oh, smudge me? Thank you for the cheer, Jinx. I am just the worst, man. This is all, it's all falling apart. <laughs> okay. He pulls out Sage Lighter and a shell from his backpack and proceeds to bless me right there. As soon as he finishes, a bunch of birds, seagulls, crows, and pigeons all come flying over and fly in circles above us. He said that they were telling my, me my life was about to turn around. And then he said good beer and left. <laughs> don't make noises don't just let me read the shit and be funny if you laugh it's gonna fuck me up uh, my life did change that day big time and when my mind occasionally creeps back to dark places I think of him and it pulls me back okay uh, I hope nobody ever says good beer to me I want the good times to keep on rolling oh my god you, you, you scumbag Kyle you scumbag as we continue up this list, thank you, Linda, for that cheer. We arrive at number 33. Let me reposition the... Or I could even get that other song that I like. There it is. Wow. Went to a cafe. Small place, but popular. I got a coffee and looked around for seats. None. I then noticed an elderly lady sitting by a table. I ask if I can sit down with her. She gladly says yes. We chat a bit, and it was all so lovely. After a while, she had to leave, though. Never caught her name or anything. You know, in another thread, this might be referred to as a pointless anecdote. Number 32. When an older gentleman knocked on my door one day and asked if he could possibly come inside and revisit the home in which he had lived over 55 years ago, bitch, that's how they get you. It was a pleasure to show him around, to hear his recollection of things that had happened within those walls so many years ago, some of which were eye-openers. I never saw him again because he was visiting from the other coast, where he now lives. Still, he told me tales of the house and the neighborhood that I won't forget. Damn, Jinx. That's 50 fucking cheer. What is that, like 50 cents? Yeah. Damn. She got two quarters to just be flipping off on people. You got two quarters, girl. I'm going to tell this story in a uh, in a thread later to bore people to tears. I'm kidding. Not because, you know, you tipping isn't a great thing, but because contextually, I possess the capacity to understand that to another person, it's fairly irrelevant. You know what I mean? Um, you mean the world to me, and I thank you, and I love you. But sometimes we gotta wake up and, and realize that just because some of the gangster shit that happens to us we love to death doesn't mean that somebody reading it is going to go, Oh my god, that's spectacular! You met a person and you were talking and then you left and you, you never got their information? Wow. One time I went to a drive through and this girl was like, Hey, I like your wallet. That's the end of my story. 
Did you enjoy it? Like, favorite, and subscribe. You know what I'm talking about? Unbelievable. I am not attacking these people, though. I'm just saying, you know? I'm just saying. Number 31. Years ago, I was at the bus stop super early one morning. It was really cold as well. Anyway, there's this guy there and I used to see every time that I would go to the bus stop at 7 a.m. He looked like a builder. He always got off near one of the large building sites by the university. We were on... Nuke it. You think you're gonna nuke that thing with three dollars? Hold up, prelude. You Do you see how... Well... Damn. I like the one that... Yeah, I can't, he kind of halved it. He kind of halved it. I didn't know that three dollars could destroy stuff like that. Well, yeah. prelude. Stream labs. Stream labs, it blows it up a significant more than Intriguing, intriguing. Impressive prelude, to say the least. Hmm. You win this round. Prelude. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Oh snap. Damn, well. Well, Jinx is just filling it back up. That's a quarter and a nickel. Okay, look, Kyle, stop. We were on nodding terms. One morning, there was a fireball disintegrating meteor, and we both saw it. He turned to me and said, with a super serious face, you know our souls are forever linked now. Uh-oh. We went back to nodding terms, and I never saw him after. I quit early morning classes. I guess because I remember it, he was kinda right. And fucking, and the fucker is still trolling me. I wouldn't be brave enough to say some shit like that to somebody that I don't know very well yeah. because every stranger for the wrong person is one one phrase away from serial killer status. You know what I'm talking about? Exactly. And with a voice like mine, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm can. walking up to people talking about, you know, our souls are forever linked now, don't you? <laughs> All this bullshit. Man, fuck that. Number 30. I was at a play barn, what? And shot a foam tennis ball out of a compressed air cannon directly into the barrel of the cannon on the opposite side, about 60 feet away. The kid operating the cannon was amazed and shot the ball directly back at me, hitting me in the head. We both looked at each other like, what the fuck? I think I'm dying on the inside. As we continue through the list of 45 crazy moments with strangers, we arrive at number 29. I've shared this on Reddit before. The day I found out my grandmother had a stroke and would never walk or talk again. I was away at college. I finally broke down in a bathroom and a girl came in and asked if I needed a hug. I was... Thank you. Well, that's on YouTube. She can't see this right now. <laughs> a girl came in and asked if I needed a hug and I was crying so hard that I really didn't get a look at her face. I cried on her shoulder for about 10 minutes and, uh, and then had to pull myself together and leave for class. I never explained myself and she never asked. I never recognized or spoke to her again. I wonder if she sometimes saw me around campus and wondered what was up and if I was okay. Jason Valentino says, is there a Lisa Simpson face that you can fill it with? Um, I don't think you can throw the Lisa face into the jar. You can't throw any of those into the jar. Yeah, no. The thing is, I just added the Lisa face as an emote. But, um... Yeah, no, the bottom line is that I guess some of them need to be... Uh... They have to be reviewed. They need to be reviewed on top of that. And, um, some of them are pretty obnoxious as far as their tears are concerned. Yeah, $25. Yeah, so don't worry. About, I mean, I, again... I think by the time I, um, you know, by the time it matters, we'll be able to stream on YouTube again, but it'll probably be like three more months, right? Yeah. Two more months. Man, it's still too damn long. <sighs> I didn't do anything, dude, you know, but YouTube doesn't care and I should be counting my lucky stars. They're not just going to terminate the whole fucking channel because that's how crazy YouTube is gotta deal with it getting hungry too many entries left did i finish this one yes as we travel to number 28 when i was studying abroad in lithuania 
I volunteered at the soup kitchen and every now and then, there would be an older lady that would help out who dropped off supplies. We would smile at one another and say hello even though we had a language barrier. One night I went to Easter Mass in the town that I was volunteering in and it was warmer during the day so I didn't think about bringing a heavier jacket once it got dark. Not to mention the Sorry, not to mention the church was this old massive building, so I'm sitting through mass and I'm getting colder and start shivering pretty noticeably, when all of a sudden I feel someone drape a scarf over my shoulders. I turn around and it's the old lady who would drop off the supplies at the soup kitchen. Once mass was over, I tried to return the scarf, but she refused to take it back. I did my best to extend my gratitude through the language barrier, but I'm sure she knew. It was the most beautiful and kind thing that someone has ever done. It's ever happened to me. Wow. That was the last time I saw her and I will never forget her kindness towards me. It still brings tears to my eyes thinking about it. Even though that says it still tears me up thinking about it. I like my version better. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? The movie rights to my version are uh, legally distinct enough from yours to uh to make it so i don't have to pay anybody anything you know what i'm talking about it does it's not that it's like the vanilla ice thing ding 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 ding, ding. somebody uh somebody's gonna like that somebody's really gonna like that uh that reference that musical reference you know how old that is we're all dying inside you know i'm like looking for another song here let's see if this song doesn't Okay. Is, that, is this what we're gonna? Okay. All right. Okay. Number twenty-seven. Was on the bus home with a girl sitting next to me that was making paper cranes. Before I got off the bus, she stopped me and gave me the crane that she was working on and smiled at me. I still have it and I still think about it a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I don't mingle with other people. Because I'd get into trouble. Trouble's bad, kids. Number 26. I was out at a beach with a family for a bonfire. Only problem was that we got there too late and there was no more open pits. We sat about on the sand for about an hour until a man came up to us telling us that he had run out of logs. Seeing as we had no pit, and that we were freezing without a fire, we took him up on his offer and joined his family around their pit. We sat until midnight talking about music from the 70s and talking about our lives. Coolest bunch of people I've met in a while. Under pressure. Number 25. Back in the late 90s, we drove a dark blue 84 Volvo wagon. Hardly ever saw another car like it. One day at a grocery store, we see another couple with the exact same car. I roll down the window and raise my fist in the air. The other driver saw me and raised his fist. Solidarity. Is that what you call it when more than one person? Um, number 24. On a night out, I was feeling pretty rough. So I sat down on some steps eating a box of hot chips. This group of girls walks past and one of them in a yellow with black polka dot dress and a flower halo broke off and sat next to me. She had a thick Irish accent. What's your name? What's your name, Faith and Megora? <laughs> oh, tippity too. Jolly. You? Annette, ask me where I live. All right. Where do you live? She grabbed one of my chips, put it in her mouth, and said, In the fucking moment. <laughs> she kissed my forehead and ran off to join her group again. I still think about her. What a, what a manic pixie dream girl, dude. How did you not chase her rollerblading ass off into the portal? Because this is Scott Pilgrim, dude. What? Oh my god. No worries, Jason. These uh, videos will be here for you on YouTube when you uh, get the chance. Thank you. And thank everybody watching on YouTube too. Don't forget to hit that like button. 
so that I can get in trouble. You know, I'm kidding. <laughs> YouTube's going to be like, hey, dad, what? Number 23. Back when I rode the bus everywhere, I was at the bus stop outside the mall, and this guy comes up and goes, will you hold my puppy while I run inside and find my wife? He produces this little white puppy. So I held it while he went inside. The puppy was so soft. The guy came back with his wife, took the puppy, and I got on the bus. And that was that. What a story. Bruh. Number 21. While out for a long walk to take some photos in Wellington, New Zealand, I stopped to drink some water and get chatting with a guy sitting on the park bench. He was homeless in that he didn't have a permanent residence, but he considered himself more of a nomad touring the country and had made his way all the way from the UK to New Zealand over the course of a few years. He went on about how he used to work in London, got sick of his corporate job, went traveling with the remainder of his savings, never looking back. He eventually burnt his savings and was now happily stranded in New Zealand. I still remember his initials being DG and he asked if I wanted to take a photo with him. I'd taken hundreds of photos of landscapes, animals, and people. But this was my favorite from the day. Huh? With number 20, got on the metro headed out to of New York City to visit family for Thanksgiving. A woman in her 70s got on the same stop as me and sat directly across from me. She had a newborn strapped to her chest and was singing in Spanish. After riding the train for about 20 minutes, she should she signals. She signals for my attention and I take my headphones out. I begin towards her and she gestures to the baby and says, you take? So I held her infant while she got herself organized to feed and change the baby. After she was done, she gestured for me to help her strap the baby back on. She waved goodbye when she got off the train, and that was that. It's weird to know that there is some random newborn that I've held, and they'll never know. Oh, please. Like, every baby hasn't been held by people they don't fucking know. What? Like, a baby retains the information of certain people, you know, prior to, to being able to recollect anything. I remember one time when I was a, a an infant. Somebody was holding me. I was like, who is this motherfucker? You know, get the fuck out of here. Number 19. It was the night before Christmas Eve and all through the house. I'm kidding. About 830 p.m. My mom was trying to sell our place. We'd moved a few blocks away in with my new stepdad. He beats me. I'm kidding. The driveway <laughs> needed to be clear because if not, he'd get the jumper cables. There was about a foot and a half of snow to shovel. I was still pretty young. No. No. Shut up, Anna. Shut up. No. I'm tired of you being here. God. No. Oh, I'm kidding. You just, I'm going to tell everybody why now. Once again, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe because I made some fire ass black beans that you all saw on my on my fucking Snapchat story in the instant pot, okay? I've been passing a lot of gas, okay? And just now, I pulled off my headset to basically make sure that anything coming out wasn't going to be audible, all right? But in doing so, the headset came too close to the microphone, so it started making feedback happen. And if you were sitting near me, you basically would have just seen a guy go, uh oh, and then grab his headphones <laughs> off of his hand, head, and then put it near the microphone, and then go, uh, and then at the same time, you're hearing like, you know what I mean? So she was looking at me like, <laughs> I'm like, no, no. So, okay, all right? Okay, I admit it. 
I admit it. God. <laughs> the beans, dude. It's my fault. I shouldn't have gotten you an instant pot. The, I never have made the beans. Th the beans are so... Okay, they're really... So Alright. It was the night before Christmas Eve. About 8.30 p.m. My mom was trying to sell the place and we'd moved a few blocks away in with my new stepdad. The driveway needed to be cleared and there was about a foot and a half of snow to shovel. I was still pretty young and it was going to be a big job. I trudged over there with my shovel and just started the first row when a random guy in a snowplow turned in and cleared the whole driveway in two minutes. He was wearing the red plaid jacket and a toque combo, classic Canadian look. I was worried as we hadn't hired a snow removal guy, but he just waved and said Merry Christmas and drove off. Thank you, snowplow guy. You taught me a thing or two about the Christmas spirit. Wow. That's so sweet of him, though. No Mr. Plow, though, you know? No Mr. Plow, though. Number 18. So about 11 years ago, I visited India. I went to a sick temple sick bro and sat down to enjoy lang langer it's free food served by six to anyone who walks in i was served food by this volunteer and we started chatting after lunch and became buddies so fast forward i'm visiting another sick temple in the himalayas and in the kitchen there was only one volunteer when a large bus full of people pull in I went up to the guy and asked if he needed help and he gladly accepted it so I started serving food to people sitting in the lines and guess who I see sitting down? My buddy from the first Sikh temple. It was great seeing him and we said our hellos. Interesting. When worlds collide. Number 17. I was in the US Navy at the time. We pulled into port in Norway and we had a couple of days to explore and I went to the closest city, Bergen. While in the main square area of town, I just sat down on the road from their fish market. No, while in the main square area of town, just down the road from their fish market, there was a small boy, maybe three years old, and his father. The boy had a large red balloon, but it was windy and it got away from him. His father made a grab for it and missed it, but obviously couldn't run after it and leave his child. It was blowing generally in my direction, and I made a quick dash for it and managed to catch it out of the air before it blew away. I then crouched down and held it out to the boy. He looked like he was about to start crying, but immediately brightened up with the kind happiness only a child can have, and he took the balloon and his father just gave me a small smile and a nod. I remembered, or I returned the smile and nod and went on our way. This moment always sticks out to me. That name again is Mr. Plow. Number 16. I was in an ice cream store with friends. I made eye contact with some random guy walking to the counter. For some reason, neither of us broke eye contact. And for those few seconds, he made an incredibly goofy face, to which I responded with another goofy face. For the rest of the time we were in there, him and I didn't even look at each other again. You babies. <laughs> Number 15. I was on the eastbound train from Colorado two days before Christmas. There was some kind of incident in another car around 11 p.m. that night. A dude got wasted and started threatening other passengers. And we had to make a stop so that the local police could come and collect him. After the delay, the conductor came over the speakers and announced that if anyone was feeling upset or shaken by the incident, one of the passengers had offered to play his guitar in the snack car. And anyone who was awake was welcome to come down and join for the sing-along. I'm always down for weird train activities, so I decided to grab my harmonica from my bag and head down. There were about 15 of us in the car, ranging in age from 16 to mid-70s, and from all over the country. Thank you for that cheer, Chuckster. That's very heterosexual of you. I appreciate it. Not that there's anything wrong with the other one. I just love uh, saying things that get me into trouble without even meaning to whatever. We sang every song that we could think of. Even the kind reference referencing a train. Ugh. 
We were somewhere in rural Nebraska at that point, and nobody had cell phone service to look up lyrics, so at times I was pretty sure we were just making up more of the words than we actually remembered. The conductor came through after a while and offered to play a few songs, so the guy with the guitar handed it off and pulled out a mandolin. And my harmonica got passed around the group while one guy drummed along with on his backpack. Ew. After a while, the conductor got up and left, then came back with a copy of Polar Express. <laughs> he read it out loud <laughs> to our obviously captivated group of mostly adult travelers while the snow fell around us in the night. And I swear that for a few minutes, our trip felt every bit as magical as a visit to Santa Claus in the story. Sometimes, sometime well after the snack car was supposed to have been vacated for the night, we capped things off with the most ridiculously earnest rendition of Don't Stop Believing that has ever been performed and went our separate ways. I never saw anyone from our little makeshift band again, but I'll always remember that weird, wonderful late night celebration of journey and magic of winter travel that came about because some some guy was a jackass on the train. There must be a recording of this. There must be. If if it was if it was if it was new enough for them to live in an age where they can look up lyrics on a cell phone, but we didn't because we didn't have service, then you know it's new enough for somebody to have had a, a camera phone. But again, if we're to believe, hey, you want to bet your your saliva on this? <laughs> Stop the sucking of that stranger's saliva. Just a small town girl. Sorry. Sucking up a stranger's. Sorry. <laughs> slurp, slurp. Street slurp. <laughs> okay. Number 14. A stranger gave me $300. No strings attached. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. I'll be okay. Mm. Thank you, Chuckster. Thank you, Jinx. And thank you, Linda. For your incredible contraband. Lurk and Linda says, Bless you, Kyle. I thank you. I appreciate this. A stranger gave me $300, no strings attached. I met him and his wife in Oklahoma while on a road trip across country alone. I was seated near them at a restaurant bar, didn't ask for any money, and don't even know his name. But he rules. Hmm. Interesting. Number 13. I met a well-dressed older gentleman at a train station in London. He struck up a conversation about the departures board, and being a 20-year-old woman, I was hesitant to talk back, but I liked chatting to people and decided to keep the conversation going. He ended up being extremely easy to talk to. I ended up telling him I was waiting for a train to take me home to the airport so I could see my boyfriend in Hong Kong, sorry, whom I hadn't seen for months. Uh, he ended up telling me all about his life and his amazing family and was just being all around charming. I decided, fuck my boyfriend, and I was gonna be with this new guy, I'm kidding. Jesus, get through the list, man, you gotta stop. Somebody's gotta stop me from making 40 plus entry uh, lists because maybe I can't keep it together for that long. He was in London for the day to pick up a passport so that he could whisk his wife away on holiday, and he just made me smile the way he was so smitten with her. He ended up leaving after about an hour, or half an hour. And when he left, he took my hand and kissed it, telling me it's so beautiful to see a young woman in love. I never caught his name, but I'll always remember him. Creep. Number 12, I was 13 and waiting for a taxi. It was raining and I had no umbrella, so I got soaked. My boobies. This guy next to me sheltered me from the rain with his umbrella. Mm -hmm. Always bring an umbrella, dudes, you know what I'm talking about? Um, we talked while waiting for the taxi, and he was so easy and fun to talk to. After about 15 minutes, another guy came up on his scooter. My guy told him that I was a friend of his, and if he could drop me to his destination. So yeah, I just climbed on some stranger's scooter and took the lift home. 
Perhaps that was dumb, looking back on it. It certainly was, you stupid broad. You know what I mean? Anyway, I still think of this guy and the kindness he showed me to this day, even though I don't even know his name or remember his face. Yeah, you didn't get anybody's names or faces, you know? You know, in a world where Instagram and Twitter exists, even if you were stupid enough to just jump on somebody's scooter, why not, dude? Why not just literally throw their faces out to the internet and be like, Hey man, if this is the last y'all see from me, this is the motherfucker right here. Please, I am a white lady. I'm kidding. Number 11. Am I kidding? That's the worst part about the world. I was on a long, late night bus ride. It was express, so it made very few stops. The bus had maybe 10 people on it total, and halfway through the trip it made a stop at a small town station so people could grab a snack or use public restroom and maybe stretch their legs. I kind of want to go to Wawa. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, all right, sorry, sorry. Um, halfway through the trip, we made a stop at a small town station so that people could pick up a snack or use a bathroom and stretch their legs and shit. You know what I'm talking about? I went up to the counter to buy what at that point was my dinner, even though it was about 10 p.m. And when the cashier rang it up, I passed a $50 bill to her and she told me that she couldn't make change. Defeated, I went back to my seat on the bus. As everyone piled on the bus and the bus drove away, a lovely middle-aged lady walked up from her seat near the back and politely asked if I minded if she sat with me. I told her she was more than welcome. She sits and proceeds to unpack a small lunch bag. She then splits the entirety of her meal with me. She said she had been waiting for the washroom to clear out and overheard what happened. She said, I've gone hungry in my life and it sucks. I wouldn't wish it on anyone, so you can share with me. When we were done, I jokingly asked if she could break a 50 and we had a good laugh. She stuck with me for the remainder of the trip and was a very interesting lady besides being incredibly stinky. I'm kidding, generous. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really stupid, I'm sorry. I won't, I won't. You know, I just, I'm bored. I'm bored. Really? <laughs> there's, there's, there are too many. There were too many. These aren't bad. They're, these aren't bad. But the ones at the bottom were killing me, nigga. Man, I was riding my bike, and this one dude was like, high five. And then I said, high five. And then I never saw him again. I still think about that guy to this day. That should be this list. You know, one of the lists um, that we were reading before um, is one of my favorites because the entire list is basically just like, but if you could see the look on their faces, and this whole list, if I had to sum it up in one phrase, it would be like, I still think about that person to this day. I hope they're doing well. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Mm. Number 10. I'm pretty sure I've told this before, but I enjoy it. So here it goes. Needed that sentence. I was playing on my Nintendo DS in the subway when I caught a random connection. I look up to see if I could spot the other person with a DS and wound up locking eyes with this incredibly intense little boy who was seated a few benches away from me. Do you have Pokemon? How come this doesn't exist in the world today? I want us to have like an app that just has like shit on so I can like text a stranger in the room, you know? And they won't know it and we'll have to be trying to figure out who it is. That'd be so dope. Somebody needs to make an app where like it can just, it's, you know what it is? I'll call it a public chat room, right? Where like if somebody's near enough, you can just pop in the cops. That'd be that'd be a, it'd be like I'd be I'd be in there like, so who got the weed in here? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That'd be so cool. The, and the, and, and then totally not a cop. Sixty four is in there like, what's going on? And I'm like, and my my username would be like, uh, uh, anal, anal rapey bloody turds, uh, sixty four. Oh god. <laughs> okay, do, do you have Pokemon? He asked. And as it turned out, I did in fact have Pokemon. With that, our fate was sealed. There's this thing in the Pokemon games where if you meet the gaze of another trainer on your journey, then you must do battle. I had just experienced this in real life. He destroyed me. All level hundreds, felt like I was an extra. 
in the damn anime <laughs> doing battle. This dude said he felt like an extra in an anime doing battle with the protagonist. Hilarious. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Number nine. I was leaving the gym and walked down a long hallway and didn't remember having any money on me. As soon as I stepped outside, I heard a coin drop, and I looked down, and two dollars seems to have fallen from somewhere on me. It was a strange because I didn't have any money on me, and it would have fallen off me instead while walking, or inside while walking, I thought. It rolls up, and I pick it up, and I was confused because I don't know where the two dollars came from. I look up, and there's a homeless man in a wheelchair playing harmonica who I otherwise would have passed by. I gave the two dollars to him. He said, thank you. I said, no problem. I began to walk away and he said, good and you? What? Damn it. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not. Shut up. Baby, I'm sorry. Shut up. It was. Ugh. It was such a cute face. <laughs> Ugh. These beans, man. That's why I need to have a sandwich tonight. No more beans. <laughs> Don't. Why you gotta? Why you gotta bring up stuff like that, man? Yes, I have had episodes in the bathroom following trips to Wawa for their hoagies, but at least at least the bathroom or where the farts belong somewhere they belong i had a hoagie from wawa now i'm on the toilet son <laughs> all right look number nine all right i was leaving the gym <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. No. I was leaving the gym. I was leaving. <laughs> I was leaving the gym and walked down a long hallway. Didn't remember having any. Damn it. I read this. I'm so sorry. All right. Look, look, look. I looked up. There's a homeless man in a wheelchair playing a harmonica who I otherwise would have just passed by. I gave the two dollars to him. He said, thank you. I said, no problem. I began to walk away and he said, good. And you? I played along and said, oh, good. Where did you learn to play harmonica? He proceeds to tell me that proceeds. That's a big problem you have. He proceeds to tell me that he used to uh, play all sorts of instruments until he had a stroke and showed me one of his arms didn't work anymore. He was a nice guy and it made my day a bit better. It was nice and humbling as far as a moment's concerned. Wow. You mean to tell me a stroke could take away my ability to play a video game? It's fucked up. I need to get sexy. <laughs> Number eight, I had about a two hour drive from Columbus to Cleveland. I tend to drive on a faster side and therefore pass a lot of people. I noticed about 20 minutes into the drive that the car behind me was still, was still at the same, no, no, I noticed the car behind me was still the same one that got onto the highway right behind me. We ended up driving the entire two hours next to each other, or in front of each other, or behind each other. We created spaces and lines to help the other pass the slower cars and made sure that the others wouldn't fall behind. As I was getting off the highway, he honked his horn, gave me a big smile, and I waved. It's been my favorite driving experience so far. Adorable. Number seven, same first name, same birthday, same interests and work field. I saw them at a network creation event and never saw them again. Someone says that seems like momentary success, but long-term failure on the part of the network creation event. Hilarious. Number six. The day my dad died. I was holding it together pretty well. Late that night, I went to Target to have a moment to just zone out and buy a few groceries. As I got to the check stand with my arm full of stuff, I dropped a container of sour crying, and it exploded everywhere. 
I completely lost control of myself and started to cry. The ugly cry? I was instantly surrounded by a group of women who just took charge of the whole situation. They helped me get everything paid for, they cleaned up. One lady even got a new sour cream. No words were spoken, but their compassion and take charge attitude has stayed with me since. I do like the idea of women having each other's back. That's the way that y'all should handle each other because nobody knows what it's like to be hormonal and completely unfucking balanced harder than you women. So instead of backstabbing one another, you should definitely just like keep your shit together. Um, you know, when you help other people. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Some of y'all ladies out there are so petty. Oh, number five. We're almost there, guys. Number five. When I was at Disneyland a few years ago, a woman approached me out of the blue in the middle of Main Street and asked if I'd like to dance. I obliged her, and we spent the next few minutes chatting while her friends filmed us dancing. It turns out it was her birthday, and she was traversing the park on her birthday scavenger hunt, and one of the items on the list was to dance with a stranger. I wished her a happy birthday, we said our goodbyes, and went our separate ways. I never even got her name, but it still makes me smile when I think about it. Oh, Sorry, God. Number four, New York City Bar. I was on a first date, and there was an old guy at the bar. I looked like an old fisherman from a novel, and he was convinced that my date and I were already married. He went on and on about it. We said we weren't married and he told us that we were meant to be together and would be married a long time. He talked with us for a good 15 minutes about this and my date and I did get married about a year later and have been together for almost 25 years now. Bruh. <laughs> Number three. It's a lot of edits, my dude. Can you stop? Oh man, this better be like the, the, the most mind-blowing story I've ever read. Number three. I was walking somewhere on the waste. I was going to say wasteland. You want to be playing Fallout, my dude. I was walking somewhere on the West End in London on a weekend looking to buy a cap because it was almost summer and that day was really warm. A woman from behind me called out and asked where Chinatown was. I know where it is, but where I was at that point, I had no idea how to explain it to her. She was with two children. So rather than tell her where to go, which would take me a while to explain, I just asked her to follow me. They did. I held the hand of the youngest, and we all walked hand in hand to the direction of China Chinatown. While we were walking, someone, we, I and the mother, started chatting. No, it says somehow. They were from France. She's of Asian descent. She works for a French company in southern France. She's a single parent, and the boys are on a school break. The French father disappeared a long time ago. I felt a pang of silence. Here was a lovely family, but no father. It was a casual conversation, but being very emotional, I choked up a little bit. Finally, we reached our destination, and before I could wish them a good day, the mother invited me to join them for a dinner. I was surprised. Here I was, a total stranger, a male in my late 30s, being invited for a meal by this lovely family. I'm shy by nature, so I casually declined and wished them a good evening and to enjoy their dinner. She thanked me profusely, we bid our goodbyes, and walked to the opposite direction. It must have been two or three minutes of walking when I realized how foolish I was. I went back and started looking for them. Thank God I spotted them again. They were taking photos near the Arch of Chinatown. I approached them and I said, yes, I would like to join them for a dinner as I was also starving. She seemed pleased and happy and I started asking where they wanted to eat. After taking photos, we head for an eat all you can buffet. We call that an all you can eat buffet. You fucking foreigners. I was so happy. the. <laughs> been a lengthy list man excuse me <clears throat> I was so happy the entire time we had dinner like we were a big family I could also sense that they were happy 
We chatted the entire time and had to translate our conversation to the boys in French. Since they were fatherless for about an hour, I was like a father to the boys, oh boy. I accompanied the youngest back and forth, getting his food downstairs, and had to show the oldest where to find the washroom. We finished the dinner, we paid the bill. It was already dark um, when we got out of the restaurant. It was around 10 p.m. already, and I asked them where they're headed, and she said back to their hotel. Where? She said, Hammersmith. Good Lord. That's far from where we were. She was clearly not familiar with London, and she was frantically looking on her map. London is not safe. So I offered to accompany them to their hotel. We took the tube to Hammersmith. It took us maybe 30 minutes to get there, the nearest station. From the station, we had to walk a good 10 to 15 minutes in semi-darkness back to the hotel. Finally, we spotted the hotel, and at that point, I felt a bit sad. I enjoy my time with them, and it's time to say our goodbyes. In front of the revolving door, we thanked each other and hugged each other. We said our goodbyes, and the boy shouted back, Merci, monsieur. And, uh, oh, that's, that's monsieur, right? Eh? Fuck me. As they walked back to the building, I started walking back to the station. But before I turned the corner, I looked back at them for the last time, just to be sure they're okay. I usually don't stay too late when I'm out in London, but that night was worth it. I will never forget this day for the rest of my life. Thank God it didn't end in some kind of, and we've been married ever since. That's what I was that would kill. I would be like, oh my God, whatever. Because for real, like how big would the titties on a, on a mom with two kids have to be before the guy was like, you know what, man? Hell yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, that's enough. <sighs> Number two. I found a rock formation that looked like a dick and balls in a cave in Vietnam. I laughed and pointed at it. Some Chinese tourists started doing the same thing, and then some Russian tourists followed suit. Great bonding, because no matter what, phallic-shaped objects are funny. This is my kind of entry. Somebody said, pioneers used to ride these babies for miles. Oh, God. Not that shit. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> the final entry on the list of 45 crazy moments with strangers. Man, I'm going to have to edit crazy out. <sighs> This was these were just moments with strangers. I can tell you that um, number one reads. I was about 10 years old and I had a pair of Heelys and they were the coolest fucking thing on the world. I would roll all over the on these things and thought I was hot shit. We were in China spending a few weeks in Beijing and I was rolling around in Tiananmen Square. I hit a crack and lost one of the wheels. Aww. I looked around for about an hour, but to no avail. I was probably visibly bummed as my Heelys, the single thing that made me hot shit, were now effectively and basically ruined. The next morning I was walking through the square on the way to meet friends and an older gentleman ran up to me and stopped me. He had found my wheel. He said that the, he had seen me rolling around and saw me looking for the wheel after all. He saw that I gave up and stuck around for another hour to keep looking after I left. He came the next morning with no expectation that I'd pass through, but wanted to be there just in case. I'm not sure who was happier, me that I got my wheel back or him because he didn't think he'd see me in literally the world's busiest square. I said thank you and that was that. We both had places to be. And that was that. What an interesting story. He's my new dad, yeah. And then we got married. <laughs> oh my god. So, um, I love you guys. Um, I don't know why the Zodiac Killer letters are, you know, drifting up to. Whoa, oh my god. <laughs> Wait a minute. Shouldn't shouldn't not say for work things be hidden? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Guys, I hope you guys are wait, I can't go to No. Man, everybody's getting rid of InfoWars. It's pretty sad for Alex Jones. I mean, people seem to care all of a sudden cuz stupid people are getting people in trouble now. You know. <laughs> 
somebody gotta be worried about the frogs but guys you'll catch me soon and we'll go from there thank you for being here tonight thank you for being amazing if you're watching on youtube thank you for um what you know oh wow i was just talking about alex jones this is why i follow these assholes oh no why is he why is young talking about angela what's her name Angela Pierce Price. <laughs> that one. Yeah. Good night, Linda. Wait, who's talking about Philip DeFranco and his garbage? <sighs> his garbage Alex Jones takes? That's what it says. I don't care, but I'm just curious in here. I'm just curious. All right, guys, I love you, and um, keep me abreast well, of whatever's thought, going on. You know, if anyone will, I feel like uh, hey, oh yeah, I can unclick the thing now. Yeah, get at me in the Discord or on Snapchat, whatever you want to do, and um, just be safe. You'll see me tomorrow, and um. I want you to stay safe until then. Love you. Hope you had a great day. Thank you for being you. And I'll talk to you soon. Special thanks, of course, to Vanessa for, you know, making making the world go around, making my way downtown and walking fast. Can't handle that chick, man. But I thank all of you, Linda, Jinx, Prelude, um, Chuckster, just, just for being badasses. You know, I appreciate all you do. Thank you all for being here, though. Emperor, Chuckster, Prelude, Vanessa, um, Sin Matthews, McJamesius, Emperor. Uh, blah, blah, I said that already. All right, guys. Love you. Talk <laughs> to you soon. Um, bye, bye, bye. <laughs>